So at the same time, Black Myth Wukong is breaking records on Steam, over 2.2 million players, etc. Dustborn is talking about 200 players or so, under 200 players, they say. Now that sounds crazy, but do you know what's really crazy? It is very possible that Red Thread Games, the company behind Dustborn, probably paid Sweet Baby Inc. more money in consulting fees than Dustborn is going to make. Think about that. Talk about getting screwed. If you're new to this channel, then welcome. But if you're one of the people who've been watching my videos, one of the 4,000 that probably won't get notified of this upload, not even an impression, I tell you, but you still found yourself here, then you know that for the longest time now, since the 13th of March, when I uploaded the genius of Sweet Baby Inc., I have been telling you people that Kim Bale, the co-founder of that company, is a genius. Because who else can do what she does? She basically walks into a company and tells them to do whatever she she wants to their game. Then when they implement her recommendations, the product in the case of Dustborn generates less money than the amount of money they paid her in consulting fees. I mean, they might as well have been robbed. It literally would have been better for Red Thread Games and even Tales of Kinzira if a criminal, Criminal A, had broken into their office and stolen things. Because at least in that case, their games would have generated enough revenue to recoup those losses. I mean, Criminal and stealing millions from that office, maybe some laptops, somewhat screens. How much can Criminal A carry on his back? But Criminal K, as in K for Kim Bale, no, she allegedly needs nine million to walk through the door and rob you. <laughs> Rob you of your game achieving great success. That's what I mean by that. Lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. You know what? Let's start the video. With everything that has been happening recently, with everything that is happening right now, I think I am just going to come out and say it. Gamergate 2.0 is done and the gamers have won. I can understand that some people might be reluctant to say this, I truly do. Nobody wants to count their chickens before they've hatched and all that. But compare and contrast two things. Thing number one is the one you can see right now in this video. It has achieved an all-time peak player count of over 2.2 million players on Steam. It has broken multiple records and sales are through the roof. That is the current state of thing number one at launch. Thing number two, on the other hand, well, that thing is called Dustborn, and it has less than 200,000 players on Steam right now at launch. And that's 200,000 without the thousand, of course, meaning it has launched to a player count of under 200 players on Steam. Now that, that is insane. Me and my videos are enduring the shadow tactics of YouTube with shadow nunchucks and shadow shurikens to boot, but we can still achieve those kinds of numbers. So what is the difference between these two things? Why is thing number one breaking all the records while thing number two struggles to stay alive? Well, it's simple. Thing number one, that thing being Black Myth Wukong, said no to everything thing number two said yes to. Thing number one said no to Sweet Baby, forced diversity and inclusion, DEI slash ESG tempering, the in-game she males with atrazin poisoning to make them look like men instead of women. While thing number two on the other hand, Dustborn, said yes to all of that. And the results speak for themselves. As such, these two things, no, these two games are a good case study for everything that gamers have been complaining about. One game was rewarded with instant millions for listening to gamers, while the other game was rewarded with instant thousands or hundreds or whatever for not listening to gamers. Now here's the thing, I guarantee you that normies and the people who make decisions within these companies, who are also normies, can see every everything that we are seeing. They can see the gulf in performance between these two things and the reasons why these two things have performed the way they have have been made abundantly clear by the voices online. There's no hiding it anymore. There's no saying it's just a fringe minority or far over their types. There's no it's R-wordism, it's S-wordism, blah blah blah. That's 
that's all done. Yes, sure, the people in favor of making games like Dustborn will still say those things, but the bottom line is, as they say, the bottom line. And normies, the normies in charge of game companies, the normies with board seats and majority shareholdings, they only care about the bottom line. That's it. And because of these two things, Black Myth Wukong and Dustborn, normies can clearly see without a shadow of a doubt since these games launched at the same time, what will happen to their bottom line if they keep entertaining the voices of companies like Sweet Baby Inc. But more importantly, they can see the potential revenue they could make by ignoring those voices as well. And once you have the normies seeing things the way the talking heads on YouTube have been seeing them for years, then it's done. The gamers have won. Gamergate 2.0 is officially over, in my opinion. I mean, who is still going to take on the narrative consultation services of companies like Sweet Baby Inc. at this point? What are those narrative consultants going to tell them? That if they bring in their team of narrative experts, it will help the game avoid insensitivity things and maximize the game's overall appeal to a broader audience, increasing the overall sales of the game. Is that what they're going to tell them? After Black Myth Wukong and Dustborn. Like, seriously, who's gonna listen to that? I mean, any game development company that still decides to work with companies like Sweet Baby at this point? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. That company deserves everything it is going to get. All the thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars made by Dustborn. Yes, that's exactly what that company deserves. Basically, I... I just don't see an argument for the other side anymore. They don't have a financial leg to stand on. And even the morality argument that they like to throw in everyone's faces. It doesn't hold up. Where is the morality in knowingly doing something that will lead to people losing their jobs in today's economy? Where? Yes, let's make those female characters ugly. Let's feed them that digital atrazine that turns the frogs gay. Let's do that. And also, let's make sure that the story of this game is laced with ultra, super, over there, progressive, progressive things. Yes, let's do that. But when the game doesn't sell and the studio has to close down, well, that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. All of you can just be unemployed and look for some other way to feed your families. Yes, that's moral. We did the right thing. We knowingly did something that would lead to people losing their jobs. Like, WTF, is that morality? No. <laughs> no. Maybe if all these narrative consultation companies were doing the things they want to do for free, maybe they would have a leg to stand on, but they are not cheap. Apparently, apparently, allegedly, when they come through the door, they are walking in for 9 million racks. Bruh. And by the way, that story about the alleged 9 million in consulting fees Sweet Baby wanted from Game Science, Till this day, till this day, Sweet Baby has not released an official statement denying those claims, those allegations. Till this day. Make of that what you will. But for me, with the release of Black Myth Wukong and the success this game has seen, Gamergate 2.0 is done. There is no reason, there is no leg to stand on, there is nothing that the other side can say to justify their existence to anyone now. Nothing. And one of the reasons for that is the run out of IPs. You see, the things that these narrative consultants were doing to games, they used to be able to get away with it because they did them to pre-existing, already established IPs with a large fan base. So even if the game was laced with people who look like Mary Jane from Spider-Man 2, the game would still sell because of the strength of the Spider-Man brand. Even if they made the woman in Mortal Kombat 1 look like the kind of woman you have to blink twice in order for you to realize that they are women, it was fine. Mortal Kombat, Spider-Man, Last of Us, those IPs have a strong built-in audience. They'll still buy those games. Even Assassin's Creed with all the drama that's been happening on that game, it's still going to sell. But now, after they've used up all those IPs and games, the narrative consultants have run out of big name brands to hide behind. Now they have to apply their unique worldview to their own games like Dustborn or Concord. And just look at the results. The results speak for themselves. And another note on Spider-Man and Assassin's Creed. Even if Spider-Man 3 comes out and does well, I have a feeling it won't outperform the first Spider-Man game. Even if Assassin's Creed also does well, I have a feeling that the future sales of that franchise are going to gradually decline. 
that is what we saw with Star Wars. The Force Awakens opened to what, 2 billion? But gradually over time, the series started to falter. And why is that? Because the ideology that governs these narrative consulting companies is poisonous to the long-term health of IPs. And for the first time since Gamergate won, the normies can see these things. And that's why the gamers have won. Now, does it mean that the other side will just stop talking and disappear into the night? No, they'll kick and scream for another two to three years. But unlike before, fewer and less people will be willing to listen. And that's what their death will be for them. They will be the tree falling in the forest that nobody hears. Now, I'm sure some of them will try to resort to the tactic of Gamergate 2.0 was never a thing. The trend of forced diversity in gaming was blown out of proportion. I'm sure they'll say those things. Some of them already are but that's still just the gamers winning because now the people who used to enjoy throwing forced DEI in everyone's faces will now have to pretend like they never did that to begin with so again Gamergate 2.0 is over in my opinion and if there are still game development companies out there if they are still out there Game development companies that don't think it's over. Game development companies that want to ignore gamers and would love to just bring in the services of Sweet Baby, then that's also fine. Let them, let them do that. Let them bring in Kim Balea, the genius of Sweet Baby Inc. She'll tell them what to do to their game to make it more palatable, more acceptable to the modern audience. The modern audience that does not exist. They too can then enjoy the wondrous benefits it's seen by Dustborn. They can launch to 200 players on Steam and be happy that they made thousands or hundreds from the game they spent millions on. So I'll just say it again. I'll just count my chickens yet again. Gamergate 2.0 is done and the gamers have won.